One of the things that I like to do on this channel is let you guys in on information that you may have missed or that is suppressed or hidden or just simply overlooked. And some of these things may or may not affect your life, but there are some things that affect all of us. And some of these things elude our detection. Now there is something that exists in our bodies that we have been consuming on a regular basis without our knowledge. And that is plastic. Recently, scientists took stool samples from several individuals from all over the world and discovered an alarming amount of nanoplastic particles in every single sample studied. So there are three questions we need to answer here, actually four. One, where are these nanoplastic particles coming from? Two, how are they getting into our bodies? Three, how do we stop these nanoplastics from getting into our bodies? And finally, how do we get them out? What is a nanoplastic? Nanoplastics are polymer-based particles in the nanometer size range. They are either intentionally manufactured for different products with a defined size and composition or formed by the degradation of larger plastic items. However, currently there is no official definition for the term nanoplastics because it does not consist of a uniform material or composition. The scientific community is using the following size categories for classification for the different plastic particle groups, nanoplastics, microplastics, mesoplastics, and macroplastics. The continuous process of unintentional fragmentation of mismanaged plastic waste by exposure to sun, wind, or water leads to the formation of particles in the size range of one micrometer to five millimeters, and subsequently to nanoplastic particles smaller than one micrometer. Now, anything the size of a microplastic or smaller, five millimeters or smaller, those are almost everywhere. They are found in places that would be considered very remote from remote mountain ranges all the way to the deepest trenches of the ocean. It is in the air, it is in the water, it is in the food, so therefore it is also in our bodies. And because it ends up in our bodies, it also ends up in the unborn child if you are pregnant. It has been found in the placenta and the feces. Understand that in a 2019 Australian analysis, People consume a credit card size worth of plastic each week, which is about five grams a week, which is over a pound of plastic every two years. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but I do believe that having that much plastic running through your body every two years is not making you healthier. One of the biggest problems with this stuff going through your system is that in the environment, these plastics like to become attached to other chemical contaminants. And so that stuff also makes its way into the body. Like I said before, these nanoplastics, anything that is five millimeters or smaller, that stuff has contaminated virtually everything. It's in the ocean water, fresh water. It's in the municipal water supply. It's in the air, it gets into the soil, it gets into the vegetation, wildlife, farm animals. It makes its way onto our plates and into our glasses. So there should be no doubt that this stuff is getting into our bodies. But what are the main sources for this? Uptake and bioaccumulation of microplastics and nanoplastics in the human body. 
There are three routes for microplastics and nanoplastics to end up in the human body. Inhalation, ingestion, and skin contact. Inhaled airborne microplastics originate from urban dust and include synthetic textiles and rubber tires. As discussed above, microplastics will be ingested as they are prevalent in the food chain and water supplies. While the skin membrane was too fine for microplastics or nanoplastics to pass through, it is possible for them to enter through wounds, sweat glands, or hair follicles, although all three routes contribute to the total amount of microplastics and nanoplastics present in the human body. It is the particles in seafood and in the environment that constitute the greatest risk of absolute exposure. This is due to long-term weathering of polymers, leaching of polymer chemical additives, residual monomers, exposure to pollutants and pathogenic microorganisms all being active in these environments. When it comes to the consumption of these nanoplastics, microplastics, the number one route according to recent studies is through ingestion, food and drink. Even though polypropylene, polyethylene, and polyethylene terephthalate are the three main polymers that enter the body. These plastic particles come in different shapes and sizes, and once they get into the gut, it is a matter of the shape and size along with its composition that determines the absorption rate from the digestive tract into the cells and body tissue. It is much smaller compared to the amount that was ingested. The secondary method of exposure is inhalation. Indoor Airborne plastic particle inhalation from textiles, dust, contaminated aerosols. A lot of people aren't going to like this, but when you are walking along the beaches of the ocean, you are likely inhaling aerosolized plastic particles from the ocean. By the way, speaking of inhaling plastic particles, there is something else that is happening all around us right now. It is in the works right now and it will have a significant effect on the population amongst other things, and that is mold. I'm going to do a presentation on mold because it is going to become a very big problem very soon, and I want you all to understand why. Now, when it comes to the inhalation of plastic particles, this is more prevalent in urban areas and suburban areas, and I'm sure you can all understand why that is, of course. When it comes to getting microplastics in the body through skin contact, you of course are not getting much skin absorption, but what about those microbeads you find in body scrubs, exfoliating beads? What about those microbeads in toothpaste? Children's toothpaste seems to be full of it, and toothpaste is not edible at all. In the cheaper brands, it's plastic. In the more common brands, it's silica. You can't ingest either. So you're probably wondering what these micro and nanoplastics are doing to the body. Well, according to the Plastic Health Coalition, researchers have hypothesized that human exposure to microplastics could lead to oxidative stress, DNA damage, and inflammation, among other health problems. Particularly when inflammation becomes chronic, this can pave the way to very serious health problems. However, it's not only the plastic particles themselves that are potentially harmful. The surface of microplastics in the environment are colonized by microorganisms, some of which have been identified as human pathogens. What they are saying is they have found evidence that plastic contamination is damaging and unhealthy, but they are not really sure what it is going to do to people. They have a pretty good idea of what it is going to do to people. For example, they know that people who suffer from certain chronic diseases, like inflammatory diseases, also have a very high intake of nanoplastic particles, maybe because they work in something like a textile factory. Understand, folks. If you were to eat plastic, just plastic, your body would reject it because it doesn't know what to do with it. But when that plastic is broken down into particles and accompanied by food or nutrients, 
your body wants those nutrients, and so it will take the bad with the good. And so those nanoparticles get absorbed along with those nutrients. So I guess at this point, you want to get rid of the toxic plastic residue that is in your body already and do as much as possible to keep it from getting back in. You want to keep the place you live in clean, vacuumed and dusted. If you use tap water for drinking, cooking, bathing, it is a very good idea to use a filter. You can use a shower filter as well. Stop using artificial fragrances. Those fake smells they sell in a can, the aerosols are absolutely horrible for your health in general. You want to stay clear from plastics that have been heated up, like warm water bottles. You don't even want to inhale anything around plastic that has been heated up. There is plastic in canned food, makeup, soaps, moisturizers, it's a really good idea to find natural products for your body anyway. Now think of this. Right now, you probably have heavy metals in your body that you need to detox right now. As far as I know, pretty much the same rules apply to detoxing plastics as you need to chelate and cleanse with salads. The most important thing here, folks, is your gut health. When you have the right probiotics, good gut flora, when you don't have a leaky gut, your gut will do its job and get rid of a good amount of those plastics that are consumed. Chewing gum, plastic straws, plastic packaging for food, bottled water, of course, styrofoam containers, plastic lighters, mini cleaning products. Seafood is a big one. It's just becoming more unhealthy as the years go on. Supplements, sports supplements, printed receipts. These are all things to avoid when you want to consume less plastic particles. I really encourage you all to look further into this so that you can stay that one step ahead of the game. You always want to stay one step ahead of the poisons that we may unintentionally consume. We may not fully understand the health risk involved with ingesting these nanoplastics in our bodies, but at least we have enough knowledge to apply the solutions before the problem gets worse. That's all for now, folks. There is more to come, so stay tuned. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. I have a feeling this is going to be an exciting week, not just for me, but for many of you as well. Take care, everyone. And as always, stay awake, stay aware. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.